everyone, welcome to this fly tying video. Today we're going to tie the EA Emerger. The hook I'm going to be using is the Hanak H390BL. This one is this clean camera hook, size 14. And the thread is Samperfly Nano Silk 80 knot in beige. So to start off this fly, we'll start right here at the eye. Take it down to about where the barb should be. And then go back up again till you're almost at the eye again. We have to leave a few millimeters right behind the eye. Then the first material we're going to tie in is this polypro yarn. This one is white. You could also use grey or any light color. So I've taken a divided the bunch in three and this one is one of the three. And then to add this little extra to the fly, I'm going to add in the post some crystal flash. So to do this, I have here six strands. You don't want to overdo this, but for this size 14, 6, I found out it's quite good. And what I do is I hold this between my fingers and then with a velcro or a comb or anything. You can just start combing these materials together and at the same time make sure to twist here between your fingers just a little. This will help all these materials blend in nicely together. And then take your bunch here, hold it right on top. Then with a pinch loop, I'm going to secure this right here behind the eye. And here we don't want to go any bit forward, we just want to tie this down going towards the back of the fly. So with touching turns, take this down a little bit. And now this here is secured. And what you do to give this fly a nice taper and to help with that, we're going to cut this off at an angle. So there we have these ends here cut off at an angle. So we'll have longer ones near the bottom and short ones at the top. This will give a nice taper to the fly or help you achieve it at least. So then. Again, with touching turns, we're going to take the thread down. So there we have this nice tapered body that's starting to, to build. So then we want to go down quite a long bit, or the longest we can, down the band. And here we're going to tie in the body material, which is some stripped peacock quill. So here, take your Swedish quill, and what we want to do is to put one of these quills have one darker side and one lighter so what you do is you put the darker side facing down and then tie it in as close to the tip as you can and then a few turns to tie this in then cut off the excess With touching turns we're going to bind this down and continue up the whole length of the body and this will give you a nice and smooth underbody to wrap the quill on. Any fiber sticking out you can just tie this down and I'll continue just the way a bit down and up again just to build up this taper and to have this nice smooth underbody. And then we park our thread right about above the hook point. Then what I like to do is to apply some glue all over the body. This one is a really thin one, so it will not build up any bulk. And then what you do is you start winding up this quill here, making touching turns, slightly overlapping, or if you have a shorter quill, you can just tie this up, leaving just a little bit of space between each turn. 
I like to do this by hand, but you could also use hacker pliers. I just feel like I have a lot more control over the materials when I when I tie them in using my fingers. But then when I come here to the last bit, I like to use hacker pliers just to have a hold of, of just these few last centimeters. And then once you reach the thread, you can tie it up. Couple of turns just to really secure this. And then cut off the excess. And now the best thing to do is to do just a whip finish, cut it off. So there we have our quill body almost done. The last thing to do is to add a thin coat of varnish all over it. This will have mostly two effects. It will secure the quill so it won't come undone and also really enhance the look of the segmentation. And also you can just build it up a little to enhance the overall shape of the fly as well. And what I suggest you do is to leave this hanging upside down the time this takes to dry. This way you will have gravity doing the work for you and not have all your varnish, if it's a little runny, going down this way. So if you hold it this way, all the varnish will run this way and you will keep this nice taper to the fly. But here, as in all good cooking shows, I already have one done. So there I have exactly the same thing. Just this one has dried for quite a bit. So there we have the base of our fly and we'll continue tying all the materials here right at the top. So these flies are great to tie in a bunch. So you can just tie 10 of these bodies with the posts and then once they're all done or once they're all dry you can start tying the rest of the materials. So this is what we're going to do now. Start your thread right behind the posts, cut off the excess. This one has everything on it, it's extra everything, like when you order a burger, you order it with extra everything. Here it's exactly the same. We'll have all the materials tied in on this tiny little fly. So the key is to keep all the materials in quite small amounts, but then when we add all these together, if we give a nice looking fly. So then the first material that we're going to tie in on the thorax area is just to do a little dubbing ball here at the back. This will help to support the deer hair we will tie in later. So for this I'm going to grab my favorite dubbing which is awesome possum, which is Australian possum. This one is in the color natural brown and just take a really small amount. You don't need much at all and here I have almost twice as much as I want so just make the thinnest little dubbing noodle onto the thread and then we want just a couple of turns here right at the back and this will also hide all the imperfections you had maybe here at the top of your quill so don't worry about that so there we have this little dubbing ball here and what this is going to do is that we will flare out the deer hair we will tie in. So the next material is some deer hair. So I've taken just a little bunch here from the hide, put its tips first in the hair stacker, stack it. Then you see here we have all the tips aligned. And what you want with deer hair is to have as few manipulations as possible after you've stacked it. So here, if you're tying the fly this way, you take it with your left hand and change to your right hand just in order to get the measure. Then once you have the measure, and this should be right about the length of the body, or this should extend to the band here. 
So then holding this with your left hand again, we'll do just a pinch loop, a couple of quite loose turns here at the top, make sure everything is set, and then holding this really tight. And here I want to be a little bit careful because this really thin thread will just cut right through if you pull too hard on it. Once you have this tied in, we can grab all these ends here. So holding this, we can then come in and cut it off really close. And then a few more turns just to tidy up. And then here you can see that that the deer hair is splaying out just a little. This will give a really nice footprint onto the water and represent some either legs or wing buds on these emerging mayflies or caddis. Then the next thing is we can go up right to the post and here we can start posting the post which means putting it by extending right up from the hook shack. So here I'm making just a few turns right in front. This will help the post stand up. And then what you want to do is going just around the post like this. You want to build up a layer of thread around the post. This will help it stay together and also give a base for when we will tie in the materials on it. So go up a few millimeters then back down again and now we have our post here standing right up as we want it and then the next material that's going in is the most expensive material on this whole fly. I think it adds quite a lot to the overall pattern so you could tie it without it, but I would really suggest you invest in one of these saddles here. The two most used colors are this Coachman Brown and Grizzly. So if you have to choose between all the colors, I would suggest you go with these two. And then choose one feather that's the appropriate size. And for these parachute style hackles, you can slightly overdo it just to have a little little longer hackle fibers than you would when you tie a classic dry fly and I almost exclusively tie all my dry flies with this parachute style hackle you can do just a few turns if we give this nice footprint on the water and as well you use a lot less material and the fly floats better than with the classic Dry fly hackle, it's maybe just a little more difficult to tie, but with a little practice everyone can do it. So here I've selected a feather, I've stripped just the fuzzes here from the bottom. So if you see here the feather, it has one concave side and one convex. So if you're looking at the concave side, you want to strip off just a little bit more on the right side. And this will only help the hackle to wind down the right way, then one will wind it down the post. So here what you want is to tie this in right here at the eye and then holding it right up alongside the post. We will then make a few more turns like we did before when we tie this up just to secure this up the post, we don't need much, just a few millimeters, we don't want to overdo this, as I said before, we have a lot of materials going in on this fly. So each material should have, should just play a little role in the whole fly, then cut off the stem. Here you have your saddle hackle and post sticking up right about 90 degrees on the hook shank, and now the last material, we only need one or two CDC feathers and this will make for a nice CDC hackle and as well all the thorax. So here I've chosen two black CDC feathers 
I'm just going to put this one on top of the other and I've prepped them with the magic tool so here I have all the fibers in this clip and now to apply this onto the fly I'm going to use the split thread technique spin your woven counterclockwise this will flatten the thread and allow you to with your dubbing needle split it in two insert the CDC and here you want a little bit sticking out on both sides so then the first thing to do is to spin this just between your fingers and then spin your bobbin clockwise again this will cord the thread and trap all these fibers in between and then here what we want to do is this nice technique I learned from Marc Petitjean himself and this is what he calls the online dubbing so here when you have all this CDC onto the thread like this we'll take half of it and just roll it between your fingers and this will create this nice little CDC dubbing here and we'll make a few turns here at the back one in front and then once you reach the longer fibers here you want to go back here and trying to keep the post out of the way we can make a few turns here at the back and just really pull each turn you make you want to pull the CDC back and there we have this nice little CDC body here or the CDC thorax just from these two feathers and then go half a turn around the post and the last thing to do is if you tie this in the right way your, C your hackle should wind on the right way with the concave side facing upward and here I want to make about three turns that's enough and then continuing here on the post we can tie this down a couple of turns the easiest way to finish off this fly as this thread is really really thin here and you won't barely see it through the CC we can just come up right to the eye here you could also just tie it off on the post but here as we're so close to the eye we can just tie it off here so a few turns with the whip finish right here in front pull tight and then cut off your thread and now once all this is secure we can also cut off the hackle and then what I like to do to really secure this is to add just a little drop of glue right above the hackle here or to the base of the post and then you want to cut this post off and what I like to do is to cut it at an angle like this this will give the fly just a little nice look and with these with this crystal flash here it's really not for the fish but for the fisherman to be able to see this fly a long way so there even though we tied in all these different materials we have a neat looking fly that's not overdressed and will have a really nice profile on the water with this parachute tackle here as well as the deer hair at the back and the CDC the longer CDC fibers which will give this fly a nice lifelike appearance and a little movement in water so there we have the EA Emerger thank you for liking and commenting don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already see you next time and happy times